Yeah. Welcome to Post and Black. My name is David Hunter Jr. Yeah, I mean, it's my passion. I grew up watching films. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Welcome to Post and Black. My name is David Hunter Jr. And before we even get into it, we got to ask you right now. We have a special guest here. Fresh Prince or Martin? Favorite show? Mm. Mm. I'm going go with... I'm going to go with Martin. Go with Martin. Okay. Yeah. Why is that? Um, I, I just grew up on, on Martin more so than Fresh Prince, which is, I don't know if that makes sense to you. No, nah, I mean, it makes I, sense. I think his, you know? his the physicality of his comedy and just how he did it, I think I found myself kind of maybe mimicking him a little bit more. Okay. Or, okay. Shanae Nae? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, man, from the... <laughs> On the fifth, fifth flow. flow. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into it right off the bat with our, our very first guest for Post and Black, Jeff L. Walters, yeah, yeah. director, editor, chronology productions. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Jeff. Man, um, grew up grew up in New York. Um, went to film school at Regent University. Got my MFA um, for directing cinema and television. And um, yeah, I mean, it's my passion. I grew up watching films and mm -hmm. TV and. And I always said to myself, like, that's something I want to do. So Okay, yeah. okay. So you went to school back on the East Coast. And what made you want to come out to L.A.? I mean, I, I figured, I mean, if this is what I'm going to do, I might as well be in the capital, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what they say anyway. Entertainment capital. Yeah. That's yeah. right, that's right. Yeah. So how's it been going for you since you've, uh, since you've been out here? How long have you been in L.A. now? I've been in L.A. about... Eight or nine years. At the Eight or nine, nine years. That's yeah. a lot. Of, that's been, a long time. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. How's it been going for you? Man, you know, L.A. is a journey. Um, mm -hmm. When I first got here, or before I got here, I thought I had in my mind, I was like, look, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to do my thing. And um, I got some connections. I know somebody over here. I know somebody over there. <laughs> and um, I learned really quickly that uh, those don't always pan out, especially in L.A. So, yeah. You know, um, but even with that, you got to kind of keep pushing, keep going, keep moving forward. Um, you know, from there, I just picked up a, a lot of uh, freelance gigs using the, the skill set that I already knew that I already had. OK, so, um, yeah, that's that's really dope that you talk about that. That's a lot of a lot of work that you got to put in to even stay out here and to keep working. And you already had some connections, but you said it was still still hard for you. So we about to dive right in a little Let's bit because it. Posting Black, really the, the the model for the company and what we've been doing with my brother, Daniel K. Hunter, um, shout out to Daniel. He started this and he wanted to highlight people that are working in post-production who may not always get the light. So even though you're coming from a director standpoint, you've done editing, you've done freelancing, just want to talk about that aspect and how you feel about working in the industry, staying in the city going after something where it seems like it's pretty hard for African Americans to uh, to get into. So can you talk about that a little bit? Your your experiences with uh working in the industry and have you have you felt any difficulties regarding your your race playing a part? Um I feel like kind of with a lot of different things in life it's about it is kind of about who you know. Mm -hmm. Um and and unfortunately a lot of us we don't really give that hand uh, hand up like mm. we, like we should you know um just a few film sets that i've been on you know the diversity is still not there mm. you know um in my opinion um so yeah that's interesting now you you always wanted to work as a director and editor because it seems like and from just experience and talking with certain people a lot of people from our community african american usually see the actors we see the stars the movie mm. stars the denzels mm. you know the will smiths mm. you know halle berry we see viola mm. we want to be the people in front of the camera there's not too many people you know we we think we know about spike but now we're hearing about ava duvernay but is there really anybody else that people are aspiring to be behind the camera? Not even directors, maybe like editing or camera, you know, camera operators. Mm -hmm. well, why is that? Was it always your goal to be a director or did you, you have aspirations to be an actor, be in front of the camera as well? Funny enough, I did have aspirations yeah. to, be, <laughs> to okay. be an actor. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, when I was at uh, Hampton University, um, I did a few plays there. Mm -hmm. um, got my feet wet, caught the little acting bug, and um, even when I first got out here, kind of you know just tested the water a little bit. <laughs> okay. Put my, my headshot and resume out there. Yeah. But um, I, I realized that I should probably stay true to, you know, my main goal, my main focus, and what I um, set out to do, which was um, 
Always directing. Always yeah, directing. Always directing. Okay. So since you always wanted to be a director, was it hard for you to get a job when you first came out here? You yeah. said you had some connections, but yeah, it was, De- it no, was hard. It was, yeah, right okay. up, it was hard. It okay. was definitely hard. So um, how did you navigate that? Um, yeah, you know what? What they say is true uh, about fostering um, relationships um, and, mm. and and um, just keeping in contact with people that you meet. You know, it might be somebody like like um, that you meet, you know, in school mm-hmm. and you don't think anything of it. You know, you guys have a good friendship and then all of a sudden, you know, the phone rings and it's like, yeah, I remember you from da 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 Yeah. You know, you still do that. You're still interested. And then, you know, before you know, you have a job. In fact, um, I started technical directing um for a, for a network and that came from a friend okay um, so explain explain what technical directing oh, is sorry to, about to that. the people okay. you know, yeah, yeah. in technical case in case they don't know um so TDing for uh, for live tv so okay. just um you know handling the switcher um handling you know all the routing um for the different uh, effects that you might have right um you know uh, you're, you're pretty much ahead of the camera uh, department okay. as a TD uh, for multicam live TV shows so and so yeah. that that's a that's a good lead in for me right now because obviously talking about posting black for you getting mm-hmm. that experience was it somebody that recommended you um, to that job were they were they African American were you one of the only people on the set that was African American you know what this was actually a black network really so okay. it worked out in my favor yeah and it was um that's dope and in fact I didn't even start as a TD I started as a utility. Really? They were just, yeah, I was like, um, I don't really want to do this job. They were just, come on, come on and do it. I was like, nah, I'm trying to do some other stuff. I don't really want to. So I was like, all right, I'll come and, you know, you know I ain't doing nothing else right now. I'll come mm-hmm. be this utility. So I was utility for maybe, I don't know, a few months. And then all of a sudden, um, these this position opened up. I guess they were looking to kind of like scale back, you know how, you know. Yeah. Try, they don't want to pay those professional rates, so it's kind of okay. like, all right, let's 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 scale back a little bit and, you know, pay somebody less to do this job. Mm. And so I was like, yeah, I have experience. And But um, it was a foot in the door. It was a foot in the door. And then that allowed me to do some technical directing for um, for live television. And it took me, you know, a bunch of different places. And it's, um, in fact, I still get gigs for technical directing now. Based off of you that know, one based relationship. Based off of that one relationship that you don't think anything of. It's just like, you know, I mean, it's just like. That's really interesting. Yeah. That's really, you just never know. You never I mean, know. obviously being in LA and I haven't worked in post-production myself, being an actor, it is it's interesting to see some of the calls that I may still get. Mm-hmm. Years later, from somebody saying, "Oh, we were thinking about you," right? And right. in the moment when you're not working, when you're auditioning, but maybe not booking, you're mm-hmm. like, "Ain't nobody thinking about me." Right, right, right. <laughs> but then exactly. that one job comes out of there, and it's just—it's really about timing sometimes and positioning. Mm-hmm. But that lends to the next question of having the right people in position that would hire. Why is it that not a lot of African Americans are in positions of 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 power or influence to be be the people hiring because if we're all trying to get jobs whether it be an actor whether it be a director or editor but people who do not know us do not look like us mm-hmm. do not relate to us are the ones in hiring positions would you say it's probably going to be difficult to obtain those jobs i mean i yeah i mean i think i think nepotism is still a big thing mm-hmm. you know um mm-hmm. Uh, those people who are in power they you know they hand those jobs down to people that they know people in their circles people that they're close to Mm -hmm. Um, I do see a change happening um, a little bit of a change Mm -hmm. Um, it's slow yeah but it's diversity you know, is in it's, though it's happening you know you know it's happening so um, yeah and I'm excited for that uh, but I think it needs to happen a lot a lot, lot faster a lot more a lot faster okay not with just you know African Americans but all people of color yeah you know that's um, real that's real yeah so You've been out here eight or nine years now. What would you say has been your your most favorite or rewarding project to work on to this day? Mm. And why? You know what? It wasn't even out here. Oh, really? That, yeah, it wasn't even out here. All right, was, guys, you got to leave. Don't. It don't, wasn't even in L.A. The work is not in L.A. <laughs> right, it was before I got to L.A. <laughs> okay, it's before in L.A. It was, it was funny, was so... Um, I was home. I was still in uh, grad school. Okay. Um, I was home for the summer. My brother, um, he was he wanted to get into acting, mm-hmm. so he would always find these different um, these different uh, extra gigs. Okay. In New York, and so 
I got home, he was like, yeah, I'm working on this this film um, as an extra. They're looking for like a lot of people. It's like a cat herd call, or a cattle call, whatever mm-hmm. you call it. Yeah. Um, for a movie called Step Up 3D. And um, he was like, yeah, just an extra in the crowd. So he's like, yeah, just send your send your information, you know, send this email to this XYZ and they'll get back to you. So I did that. And then they got back to me. And then before I knew it, we was both on set just being extras. Wow. Right? And so I'm like, man, I'm in school for this. And I would really love the, the experience to be on set. I was like, all right, let me find out who I got to talk to. So I'm talking to one of the PAs. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, well, you need to talk to the key PA. And I was like, all right. So I talked to him. Mm-hmm. And the conversation now, I'm, was kind of. I'm gonna break it down oh, one more time. What go. a key PA. Oh, he's got to let him. Oh, PA is a production I'm assistant sorry. for those listening that don't know. But yeah. a, what's a key PA? A key PA is the is the head of the production department. Okay. So he gotcha. did. He does all that, or he or she does all the hiring for. Okay. You know the, gotcha. the PAs. They get the you know. Um. So the conversation was kind of going like in the way of like, yeah, just give me your information. I'll get back to you. And I was like, man, I already know how this is gonna go. So. Put that little card, wrote my information down, told him I'm in school, and I would love this experience. I work for free. Mm-hmm. And he said, all right, yeah, I keep you in mind. Yeah, for real. I was like, yeah, I work for free. I just wouldn't okay. be on this set. Yeah. So um, what ended up happening was before I started to turn away, and he was like, what are you doing tomorrow? I was like, inside, I was like, yo, this is crazy, right? <laughs> And so um, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing anything. I'm gonna see. <laughs> I'm, he said, all right. I was like, he said, yeah, and if you're going to work for me, you're going to get paid. So, you know, here's all your information. So it was it was like about two or three weeks of being a PA on this on this um, on this movie, on this major movie. That's dope. And um, I, the experience was great. You know, taking the train in the city because I was on Long Island. So mm-hmm. taking the train in the city, coming back, sleeping for two hours, going right going back right into back. the city. It was great. It was it was awesome. And then I went back to school, and I was like, yeah, I, yeah. You know. I was on that uh, major film set. So. Yeah, you you know you know what to do. Like, yeah, all, yeah, yeah. All, all you guys get out the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So I guess taking that experience, how how have you been able to use that from a, like a jump and start being your favorite project? Do you still you know revert back to some sometimes on that set for the projects that you work on on your own, or what you freelance on now? I you know what I think it was more of the feeling that I got. When I was on that mm. set, it was kind of like, this is possible. Mm. Like, I could be in the room or I could be around it. Like, wow, it's not unattainable. Mm-hmm. And so the feeling that I got from that was, um, I, I, mean, I can't explain it for real, but it, it's more of like a validation, but almost a, just an excitement. Mm. You know? And so I take that to any project that I, not any project, but whenever I get a project that I'm like, man, this is, you know, it, I get that feeling again. I find myself getting that feeling like, man, I'm, you know, yeah. I can do this. It's yeah. attainable. You know. That's that's really sometimes what you need to keep going. Yeah. Cuz one of the things I say about living in LA and then going after any type of job in entertainment is you need to know it is obtainable and to constantly have that feeling cuz some days you're going to really feel like what am I doing? Questioning mm-hmm. yourself, you know, when my brother working, you know, Daniel working at Sony, working mm-hmm. in post being the youngest person there and not seeing anybody that looked like him right. but then getting excited when he got to work on a film that had people that did look like him mm. you know man I'm, I'm I'm doing something I'm helping their project out they didn't even right. know I'm, I'm lending a voice where where normally we wouldn't be able to do that mm. so so in terms of that we're gonna we're gonna talk about that a little bit more you have you have your favorite project that you worked on that right. experience in New York what has been your most challenging project and challenging experience in terms of getting work here in LA now. Um, because I know the reason why we asked that is the the successes are are great, but somebody uh, somebody mentioned to me that the bio is a liar, mm, and they said mm. the bio is a liar. Why? Because it only tells you about the good stuff. Right. It don't tell you about the hardships, mm. and I feel like you learn more from the hardships, you know, versus actually having the success story so what has been your most challenging and how do you how has that fueled you or actually hindered you in certain ways mm. you well you know what i feel like my my most challenging project was when i first got to la you know i was working with some friends mm-hmm. and um it's like you think everything is cool because like oh this you know i know this person i know that person yeah. you know we kind of we, we're cool and um you know I guess, you know, I have an idea of how things are going to go and then these people have an idea of how things are going to go when there's so many hands in the pot and, you know, kind of not understanding, you know, what's what or what's expected. And and so 
lo and behold, the project kind of fell apart, but I feel like it could have been something, you know, great. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, who's to say who's to, who's to blame? But it was just, it was kind of tough because I feel like friendships were kind of lost. Ooh. At the you know at the end of that or just kind of like there was some distance when it was like this could have been you know a great working relationship but I guess maybe not if, if you know yeah but um but yeah that was one of the more challenging ones to know when you have your first kind of I don't want to say well I mean it's fine you're gonna have failure so your first kind of like failure mm -hmm. and it's like you kind of have like you kind of learn from that not to put all of your uh everything that you, you're you you're hoping and planning in one project. And that's one thing you have to figure out when you're out here. It's like, things don't always happen. Or you, mm -hmm. you may even complete a project, right? Yeah. And then it, it just never takes just off. And you, and you still got to move to the next thing. Yeah. Right? Even though but, your heart's still But your heart is still it. over yeah. here. And it's just like, man. That's real. But, so. That's real. That was probably my most challenging. And I think it, it, it hindered me because I didn't really want to work with people I knew. Mm. Like, I, I do... But still, it's kind of like a, yeah, I'll do it, but... It kind of, yeah, it, it gave me a little pause it about it, it. A pause. But yeah. you know what? You have to go into those situations knowing, like, all right, what to expect. Mm -hmm. It could, it may or may not happen. And I think that's another thing that you learn out here is that um, nothing's set in stone. Mm -hmm. And that things don't always pop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, it's a good lesson about being intentional with your time. Mm. Because, you know, sometimes we allow other people to kind of dictate because we're trying to be a team player. But mm. if you're not intentional mm. and you let somebody else drive, right. then you're going to be frustrated. Right. And that, that also allows for those friendships to be, you know, you brought up you brought up trying to work with people and taking stuff with you and moving on to the next project. You know, talk about taking things home mm. personally. Mm. You you have a family. Mm. You, you're, you're a married man. How, how has right. it been navigating this industry by balancing the relationship, congratulations to you on the, on the birth of a, a healthy newborn baby girl as yeah, well. You know what yeah. I mean. So how how has the all this really changed or motivated you even more to go get work when it's a lot of freelance and it's a lot of things that are out of your control? Yeah. Well, one, it helps to have a, a loving and supporting uh, partner. He um, was not paid to say that. No, no, I was not. <laughs> he was not paid to say that. <laughs> no, I mean she, she, she grew up um, in a family where um, her father was actually is an actor, and mm -hmm. he, she's been around it. So she kind of, she and she's also in theater. Um, okay. So she knows the deal when it comes to projects and the ups and the downs, mm -hmm. and, you know. But it's just as long as you have like something steady, or you have an idea, or you have a plan, and you're going here. I feel like. Um, as long as you're not wasting time. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. What, what what were you doing on set? Right. Okay. Right, what were you doing right. at that meeting? Exactly. Okay. What were y'all exactly. meeting about? Exactly. Yeah, being clear. Okay. So um but yeah, balancing it is is um it even still, um, you wanna spend that time with your family and you want to but that's what kinda keeps me centered. I you got know, you. Is, is is my family. Um but yeah, there's still that pressure though. There's still that pressure to, um, like, man, I gotta, you know, even though she may not say it, it's like, man, you I gotta, feel something it. gotta pop, something gotta happen, cause we here, we, you know, I could be doing this, that, and the third, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to chase this dream, and it's like, you know, you yeah. got a baby now, so it's like, yeah, you gotta, so you, I think you just gotta really dig deep, and then it helps when you can find validation with your with your partner with your wife and when she tells you like you know I'm still with you you know I'm you know I'm not tripping I'll let you know yeah I'll let you know when we need some money and you gotta go work yeah. you know a nine to five right you know I mean I'm gonna ask this question too because we're, we're talking about posting black and post production and just the aspect of working in the industry as a whole but you have that relationship if you want to work on projects that have themes that are geared towards you know the community you know African American community but then there's another project that comes about that may be paying more, but this one's going to pay less. How do you make those choices? Are you able to justify saying, well, I'm going to go for this one with the, you know, with, and this is not about race all the time, but it's like that all white cast or a story that has nothing to do with that community or something that's really powerful that I feel and I believe in, but it's not paying that much. Mm -hmm. Are there choices, you know, you have to you have to eat, have to keep a roof over your head, but at the same time, if you're trying to, you know, work in, a, in, a, in an environment which is... Yeah. You know, something that you believe in, how do you how do you make those decisions, those yeah. choices? You know what? I'm I'm loyal to the soil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, I was gonna say right. blood to a, to a fault at some, at, you know. Okay. Sometimes, so usually it's kind of like first come first. Serve. Like if I have committed to this over here, mm -hmm. you know, as much as I may want to jump on something over here, I'm like, all right, well, let me see this through I before I hop over this way. Right. Um, but as far as if I have a choice. You know, am I gonna work on something? You know, with my people. You know, for my people. Yeah, I'm a. I'll definitely choose that mm -hmm. um, all the time. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. So in that in that regard, what what do you feel about the state of the industry in terms of people of color? I mean, I know you said you you feel like it's diversifying, but in terms of directing, are you seeing stories like are stories being brought to you that are telling the type of stories that you want to direct and write? Or are you still having a, a struggle trying to find things out there that you're like really drawn to and really feel that are actually like not fluff? Mm -hmm. You know what? So I've had. I've, I've, OK, I feel like there's a trend happening right now. OK, right. What's the trend? <laughs> I feel like. A lot of the our stories are being told, mm -hmm. um, all the stuff's being brought to light, but I feel like it's also you know, money for some people or, or clout for some people or, you know what I mean? So I feel like I've had people who, you know, aren't black, you know, come to me with a script and want my kind of input on it. Like, you know, uh, what do you think about this yeah. scenario or situation? And I just feel like people might be trying to capitalize on it or maybe overdo it yeah. or what have you. Um, me, I like to try to, uh, my ultimate goal is to develop my own Okay. kind of script but then I also don't feel like I need to go out there and say okay I need to tell this you know captivating story and make people cry in the theater because this is what happened to our people yeah. I think I just want to be a black man that you know tells the kind of stories that I want to tell or mm -hmm. you know puts out there the, the, the whether it be like a comedy mm -hmm. or I don't want to you know, I don't want to have to be in this box because okay this is the thing right now Right. you know what I mean I want to be able to say look I'm black this is my work and this is what I'm into. Like I could be into like sci-fi, so right. like the full, you know, you know what I mean? Right. I'm not gonna put like a sci-fi race war gun. I'm not gonna, right. you know, no. I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna make a. I'm gonna make sure people are included. There's inclusion in the process, in mm -hmm. the production, um, you know, in the casting. Yeah. You know, and then, and then tell the story that I want to tell. That's that's you know? real. I mean, there's, there's also you know people talking about having more writers in the writers' room, right? Right. You know who are telling the stories. You know, when we focus on post and black, it's like we got the writers now. We got this, but one aspect I think you know my brother wanted to touch on with starting post and black is the fact that there are still positions available that I don't even think we know about, like mm -hmm. ACs, like camera operators, right. like assistant cameras. You know, people that are working in the editing room that. You know, maybe there's something to the to the way a word is said or a sentence is said that you connect to that you know the audience is going to react. Where somebody else who's not, you know, in tune with the culture, mm. they may not they may not be able to see it. They're mm. like, oh, he said it the same way. Yeah. Nah, man, there's a hint to you know yeah. there's something else there. Do you feel like it's big to have people of color in those positions as well? Oh, most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. I mean. There's something online that I saw. I'm probably gonna screw this all up, but it was—I <laughs> right. think it was Denzel. He was in a in a um, uh, uh, an interview, and he said something about um, you know Spielberg did the color purple, and um, so who did? Oh, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Scorsese. Scorsese and, uh, did. Uh, and Godfather, good, yeah. good, good fellas, and, did, uh, and, and the stuff like that, and, and, or Schindler's List. Schindler's you know? List, yeah, yeah. And right. so it's just like. You know, this person can can tell this story, but they won't connect to the culture of mm -hmm. it. Do you know what I mean? Like you right. can tell, you know, the story color purple, but you know, you're not. You know, maybe a black person might have done it differently. Right. You know, and and the funny thing he said was, you're gonna know what it smells like in the, you know on a Saturday morning when that yeah. hot comb hits your head, the back right. of your head. You know what that smells like because you're you know that's your we culture. But you know somebody else from that. A different culture might not know. Might not know. Say, you know, so um, yeah, I, I definitely think when um, doing a project, doing different projects like that that have multicultural, you can't have somebody of one culture trying to, you know, figure out. Okay, well, how does this go? How does this person do that? Okay, this is mm -hmm. what it looks like. You know, this is this is what I think it'll look like. You know, I think I think it's definitely been beneficial for accurate representation. Um, uh, when telling stories to have people in those positions that'll, that'll yeah. help out especially in the writing room or yeah and um, editing editing you know. mm -hmm. what you said yeah so okay you know.
Yeah. Well, before we wrap it up, you know, you you shared a lot of lot of good good advice. You know, what what piece of a light advice have have you say that you would you say that you've learned on this journey up till now, and what would you share with your younger self? You know, like pre L A Jeff. Mm. You know, pre company, pre you know anything. What you what have you learned? What would you say to yourself now? Because maybe somebody out there who's young, who's just getting to L A, who's just getting their feet wet. They think it's going to happen for them, you know, five years, five months. What would you say to that? Man, I would say be patient and be humble. Hmm. Like Kendrick said. Kendrick. Be humble. Yeah. You know what? Because when you get here, people will try to kind of like test you. Because you know? mm-hmm. it's like, it's almost like a, like a rite of passage. It's like... You know what you're doing. You know that you're capable of doing this. Mm -hmm. But the person that, you know, sees you as green or a fresh face, they might be like, look, this is how you do it, young. You just have to kind of take those stripes and just kind of keep your head down, stay humble, always be nice, courteous. That goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And then once they realize, like, oh, you actually know what you're doing or, you know, you know what's going on. Okay. Then that respect will build. But when you first get here, people, you know. Yeah. I'm in charge, but you gotta kind of be like, look, I know this stuff, but I'm not gonna. Yeah. You know. um, so being humble and okay. being patient, waiting for your opportunity. And um, yeah, it's gonna be a journey. It's gonna be a process. It's gonna be a process. Oh, be a pun process. intended. Pun yeah, intended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, man, Jeff L. Walters, hey. appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me, man. First brother. one appreciate on the uh, on Posting, posting back. back. Yeah, Posting Back relaunch. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Catch us out on Spotify and podcast, and we'll see you next time.